has traveled beyond digital silos. I'm here today to talk to you a bit about moving away from digital silos and moving more towards holistic uh, data platforms that allow us to increase speed and efficiency within the design and construction industry. For us, we've got two really big questions that our industry needs to help answer. The first is around affordable housing and the, the rapid urbanization that we're experiencing around the world. Like week on week, we're seeing about 1.5 million new people moving to, to city industry. We account for about 38% of that carbon emission. So we're, we're a significant player in terms of both uh, pollution, but also in terms of uh, our ability to help. One side where we have, we have to build homes. We have uh, millions and millions and millions of homes in this country and abroad that we've got to supply. And then on the other side, we're trying to make sure that we do it in the most responsible way. Not only do we need to make that shift, we've got to increase our production. So if we do nothing in this country in terms of increasing our production, in the next 10 years, our deficit's going to go from 4 million homes to 5 million homes. And just to bring that to a little bit closer, within London, from an affordable housing market only, we need about 40,000 homes between now and 2040 to satisfy the demand that we have. And in 2017, 2018, we produced 7,000. So you see this real, 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 real design process look like. What is, the, what is the current best practice look like? And if we look at that compared to, say, the design thinking methodology and overlay something that's, that's very um, cutting edge and, and simplified in its, in, its, uh, in its thought process, we start with the end user, right? We empathize with them. We understand what they need. We put that together into a really robust brief and then we start to generate th those ideas. But because we live in such a fragmented uh, industry, those ideas are being generated by everybody along, the, along that value chain, from the architects to the building services engineer to the structural engineer, et cetera. We coalesce around another idea, and then we learn from that and iterate. And so we're constantly going through this very human-centric iteration. Um, and now we're, these design teams are enabled by lovely uh, design techniques and digital design tools that enable us to work faster within our silos. But really what we're doing is we're creating a, a finite number of design options. And then we iterate and iterate and iterate and iterate. But there's a real, there's a real cost here. Teams can only afford to do iteration so many times. And then the other side of that is the time component. We only have a certain amount of time to be able to run through this. So an, an option that we've been looking at is really looking at a digital design process, that human-centric design bit up front, really understand who our, our customers are, who our clients are, who those homeowners are, really build a, a really robust brief. So that brief is, is almost watertight. And then we push that into our digitally enabled process. And for us, that starts with a generative design process. So instead of having a finite number of options, we have not quite infinite number of options, but hundreds or thousands of options. And then from there, we have this data-rich environment. We have this data-rich model that we don't throw away. And this is the key. So rather than having a siloed approach where we have something, we do a really robust uh, digital tool, and then we pass that off to the next, and then they pick up something and they run it through their own tool. We're not trying to have these handshakes that lose efficiency or lose data. We're trying to keep this in a, in a, uh, a closed unit. As the digital solutions mirror the fragmented industry in which, in which we reside. We have a very siloed approach to the way we design. We have, and so for us, taking that thread and weaving a digital thread all the way through those silos to make sure we have a seamless process really is what's going to allow us in, as an industry to want to increase speed, but also prioritize the sustainability requirement. How can we change things? If we look at a fully end-to-end -end digitized platform that has a robust generative or parametric design tool up front, we can iterate within that so we have a goals-based approach. So for us, looking at that end-to-end -end digital transformation isn't about having the most efficient process in a certain silo. It's really about taking those really efficient silos and stitching them all together. We want to make sure that we maximize that efficiency across the value chain because we've got two big things that we've got to solve. We've got an ever-expanding uh, need for housing across the world, and we've got a real climate change uh, crisis and commitment that we've got to address. Thank you.
Uh, my name's Roger Lewis from Home Attics. Welcome to the Home Attics studio. Uh, since the end of May, we've made tremendous progress with our Home Attics dashboard. And uh, we've also been having a look at what other um, people in our modern methods of construction, modu modular building um, industry have been doing. And uh, this is my um, take on what modulus identify as being the problem. Moving away from digital silos is a point which is made right at the very beginning of the uh, presentation, which you'll find um, uh, linked to in the description of this video. Um, and f with moving away from digital silos, uh, modulus claim that they can increase speed and efficiency within the design and construction industry. Uh, they go on to then identify two really big questions. The first big question is that of affordable housing. And the second um, uh, really big question is around climate um, and CO2 emissions. And the main point there is that as an industry, the, the construction industry accounts for about 38% of all carbon emissions. The presentation goes on to make the point that we have to build homes trying to make sure that we do it in the most responsible way. Um, and then goes on to say that people that are doing that um, are m nearly code compliant with the BREAM codes, the LEED uh, codes and the WELL code. Um, they claim there's a real gap in our ability to deliver the affordable homes. Uh, uh, the whole process is inefficient uh, because of these silos. Now, I believe that's a misunderstanding of, of how the process worked. The Joint Contracts Tribunals um, uh, came in many years ago and um, have worked largely successfully. Um, before the Egan report on delivery of affordable homes and housing uh, was, was published, uh, some of these criticisms were uh, more valid then than they are now. Um, but I will go on and talk about um, these measures of productivity um, and how uh, the problem isn't about productivity. Um, it's not about... Um, uh, our ability to deliver affordable homes. Um, it's a market problem, um, which, which I will go on to explain. Um, and so modulus then go on to say that they've solved the problem as they see it of this fragmented industry. Um, and then they go on to say that instead of having a finite number of op options, we have not quite an infinite number of options, uh, but hundreds or thousands. Um, now, I think that's muddled thinking. I've written uh, an ex a, a very detailed response to the, to the particular points and taken the slides from that presentation, and you'll find those in the full video beneath, but also I've um, had edited uh, the main points, uh, which are in the uh, points of difference, which I've highlighted in red in the document. Um, again, you'll find... Um, as I say, you'll find a, a, a longer considered um, article, paper, call it what you will, on the misdiagnosis by modulus, modulus of what the, uh, what the causes of the problems that we see and identify uh, are. And then only when we identify the causes of the problem, um, it's, it's a really important point, this, only when we identify the causes of a problem, can we then start to come up with solutions for it? You can iterate as many times as you like on the wrong question, but if you're asking the wrong question, garbage in, garbage out. So, my first point of uh, difference is that we don't have a supply, delivery, efficiency or productivity problem. What we have is an affordability an allocation problem. And that really comes about uh, through 
the misallocation of two things, finance and land. There are other technical things like the planning system, like the regulation of mortgages, um, resource constraints and efficiency come actually quite a far way down the list as to what has actually led us to where we are. The product that we build at um, Homatics and deliver through our dashboard is... the same pro product with just one distinction, a fleet buyer's budget for our fleet buyers like Minerva Smart Places and a mortgage origination qualification for our, pro pro our mortgage product through Mortgage Maxmatics. And as I go on through my presentation, you'll see that that is at the essence of what the crisis that we face in affordability and allocation of resources to truly affordable homes. Within our dashboard, we also uh, integrate the design for our customers, our Imagineers, of both the private spaces, the private apartments, houses, lofts, which we build for our Imagineers. But our communities also collaborate in the sort of public spaces, the common areas, the management choices for the ongoing management of the communities in which our Imagineers build. And that integration into our dashboard also is a true empathy our empathy with our customer is total. So fleet sales and private sales, an agnostic delivery on a quality product at a price point to the customer's specification. And all the choices, the choices, the infinite choices, by necessity, have to be curated and that curation is a human-led process with our design architects, our imagination, Imagineer curators who act as an architect or an interior designer would act for a private client building their dream home. With us at Homatics you can build your dream home. Remember that. The occupier's budget and from the qualification process they then access a design tool which is curated by our design architects and that stands us apart from the other volume house builders who build to sell. They build speculatively. By definition we build to order. So how tell me everything we do.